Okay, so this is the fourth part for Chapter 6, uh, the subject, Church Financial Management. Again, the topic is liquidity and financial position. Okay, so next we have investment management. Um, for small and medium churches, at least here in the Philippines, um, you can only invest any excess cash that the church is not currently using. So again, we do have you know we are building cash reserves because you know for contingencies and expected unexpected um, events that may happen all right and again uh, essentially the the cash is there and there's no urgent use for it okay it's not it's not urgently needed by the church okay so it's just there in the bank or Normally, it's in the bank, okay? But um, certain churches, instead of letting the money sit on the bank, which would earn them a very small amount of interest, less than 1%, um, bank, bank deposit interest here in the Philippines is only around 0.25%, up to 1%, depending on you know the amount of money on the bank, okay? But certain churches, they prefer to put it into investment uh, products so that they could earn more um, treasury shares, sorry, what do you call it? Uh, government bonds, okay? Government bonds, um, they're relatively safe because, you know, uh, it's backed by the government. The issuer is the government. Um, relatively safe investment, although the interest earnings is not that high uh, only up to four percent and they do provide uh, short-term types as well short-term investments i think the shortest is 90 days you have 90 days or three months 180 days or six months and then you have your one-year bonds okay for churches or for non-profit organizations i believe this is the safest type of investment to which you can put your money into and quite safely okay again liquidity the availability of cash for the organization to use in their operations you don't want to put your money or the cash into long-term investment okay because if you put it into long-term investments you have to wait until the period expires so let's say two years five years so if suddenly there's an emergency or an urgent need to use for money, you may not be able to use it if you put it into long-term investments, right? That's why um, it's only recommended or suggested that if you, if a non-profit organization ever decides to make investments, it must be into short-term investments only, preferably 90 days, okay? If at, uh, after 90 days and the church is still, you know, not, needing the money then they can renew the investment another 90 days okay and then another 90 days okay so in case there's an emergency to use money um the church would need not need to would not have to wait too long to get their cash from the bank okay because it's only invested in short term okay up to 90 days only okay there are other types of investments uh, long-term investments and then more risky sorry riskier investments like bonds wherein uh, the profit is not guaranteed there's also the possibility that the amount would go below uh, the amount of investment so it's not really advisable uh, for non-profit organizations to do that okay so for the most part when it comes to investment management again Government bonds up to 4% interest and then short term, 90 days, 180 days, okay? Sometimes even one-year bonds are kind of risky, you know, because the money would be tied for one year. Although, uh, you can also sell it, right? Let's say you have a one-year bond. Uh, you put the money into one-year bond and then suddenly at the, in the middle of the year, there is an emergency. Uh, just an example. Let's say the vehicle broke down and the church needs to buy another vehicle. So they would have to use the money. But, you know, it's a one-year bond. 
and we're only at the middle of the year, the church can sell the bond, although at a discounted amount, maybe you're not going to get the maximum interest, but at least you'll be, you'll be able to get the money with uh, a little profit still. It's still more than the bank deposit interest, so it's still a good thing, okay? You can sell it, you get the money, even if the term is not yet used up, okay? Financial institutions would normally uh, buy them as well, or the issuer, I'm sorry, the secondary issuer, which are normally financial institutions still, okay? So that's it for the investment management. Again, um, only if there is excess cash, and then uh, you... What do you call it? You have you have this belief that you may not be using the cash, the excess cash in the near term, and then should not. What's this? This. Ah, okay. It should not distract the church from delivery of its mission and purpose. Okay, so don't. What do you call it? Don't spend too much time trying to decide on what investments to take or where to put the money. Again, suggestion, government bonds, and use the, what do you call it, uh, services of financial institutions so you don't have to uh, spend too much time managing the investments. Okay? So it should not distract the church from the delivery of its mission and purpose. Um, there's this law, but this is for the U.S., not applicable here, so I'm gonna skip. Um, there are certain considerations here. You may read these, so also good. I think you would only need this if you're going to diversify your investment into other types of investment as well, but since we're not, okay, so we're going to stick with government bonds, the safest type of investment there is. Okay, um, investment philosophy. In adopting investment philosophy, the church's primary consideration are the investment objectives and the risk tolerance. Okay, okay there, sh there should be an investment policy, the different types of investment that the church is going to take. Are we going to um, avail the riskier products or are we going to stick with uh, relatively safe investments like government bonds? Okay. Risk tolerance is, I, I don't know, as a church, I don't think they should risk their money into uh, certain investments, like, you know, uh, stock investments, right? Normally, stock investments, when there's a decline in the economy or when there are problems affecting the economy, it, there, it observes sudden decline, so negative investments. Uh, I think churches should, their risk tolerance is relatively low. They want safe investments and I, it's rare for churches to, you know, take the risk into investments because investments are, you know, unrelated uh, activities really, okay? Although it might be a different source of other income. Uh, but still, they would rather not risk losing the money or the cash, but they try to maximize, uh, you know, how much earning they could make. Uh, again, government bonds would be what I would suggest, okay? Next, we have asset management uh, in relation to investment philosophy. Uh, Again, this is why I mentioned earlier that the investment should not distract, distract the church management from their mission and purpose because, uh, you know, managing a portfolio or the different types of investments could be time-consuming and it would require, uh, you know, specialization in wealth management or asset management to make sure that they are not going to lose their investment, that their investment is going to earn them more money but again kind of you know uh time consuming to do kind of a bit difficult risky to do so for the most part um if you can find a fund manager or wealth manager um that would be better let them do it 
Okay, but then um, if you're going to make investments, uh, we have that adage, don't put your eggs in one basket. So if you're going to get a fund manager, uh, the more, the better. Okay, uh, communication would be a bit, you know, scattered. You have to talk to different people, but in a way that would diversify your portfolio. And um, the more you diversify your portfolio, uh the risk is you know being spread so there's less risk that you would lose your money okay um we call it fund manager investment manager uh, what's this one uh wealth manager asset manager okay those are different terms uh sometimes used synonymously okay uh the reason why you would want more than one is that in the event that this person is not trustworthy or he may commit fraud he may steal the money okay if you only put all your you know excess cash for investment to one person and they may and they run away they take the money and go so you would lose all your money right so that's the highest risk there is but if you get two people so you put half in this one and then half in the other even if one of them run away at least you don't lose everything you still have the other half okay but and the more you engage the more you know number of manager find managers you engage so the less risk that you would lose your money let's say if only one of them runs away with the money defrauds you okay so you'd still have the remaining ones with your money intact okay but again, it's just, you know, a possibility. And that's how you diversify your portfolio or your investment. You minimize the risk of losing it all. Okay. So there is that. Um, I think the last one is about debt management. Um, it's already 12 minutes, I think. Um, I'm going to pause here. And then the last topic for Chapter 6 would be debt management. All right.